Recording in progress. Good evening, everyone. My name is Wahid Lutfi. Today is January 8, 2023. I'm going to uh, show you um, how to learn a Linux and Unix operating system in one session or one video in this uh, session, basically. So let me share my screen first. As you can see on this um, presentation, I have the first one that says that uh, learn Linux operating system in one uh, session, in one hour actually. And this is uh, the same kind of materials, but I'm going to show you this other one. And that is um, just uh, showing uh, Linux operating system in one session, because it's almost impossible to just uh, give it exact time since I'm covering Unix and um, Linux on particular Linux Ubuntu operating system. And then I'm covering chapter one and chapter two of my book. And it's about um, 70 pages of a PDF documentation that I will also post it on, on the presentation um, on the description section of this video that I'm posting. As you can see, this uh, video is um, a PDF file is already uh, set for you, so you can see the entire um, uh, PDF file. And um, when I do this one, uh, you will uh, get the PDF file on the description as well. And then um, currently, I'm also opening it in a HTML form here. And then on the website, uh, also, I have it available. And then um, at some point, I'm going to have the link as well, so you can just uh, download it. But on the description of the a PDF file, you can just actually get the PDF file from the description of the video that I'm posting here. And this one is on um, already on uh, Google Drive. So it's a number of places you can find the video and everything. So if you go on the uh, website, for example, mywebuniversity.com, the main page will just have a kind of like link here for just go getting it to the table of content of my book, which is all uh, available online, the direct path to Linux Ubuntu. It has seven chapters. Today, I'm going to uh, cover chapter one and chapter two in details. And then I have already uh, uh, prepared the PDF, HTML and everything. So I'm going to show you those ones. And if you go to the actual chapters, you can practice it online as well. And then you can learn, learn it. But some people, they just want to read the PDF file. So in that case, I just have this PDF file available for you uh, in um, the website that I'm going to post this one. And you can see the watermark on the back here. That's because I want to make sure that uh, someone does not copy it and just uh, reclaim all my work as their work. And then uh, when they um, just want to use it, they're welcome to use it and learn it. And this is for school. and people that they can improve their jobs. Um, that's what my intention is to help you out. So let me go back to here on this one, since this is already in a form that we can just uh, go um, one screen at a time. And as you can see, I have already opened this uh, session. And um, right here, the one that I showed you here, I'm going to just uh, do a slideshow on this uh, one presentation page. So this would be the thumbnails of the video that I'm going to post, which says uh, learn Unix and Linux in one session. Basically, I'm teaching you Unix as well as uh, Linux, about uh, 33 commands of uh, basic uh, commands on uh, Unix. So it's an introduction to Linux as well as Unix operating system. You're learning both at the same time, watching just one video. And then uh, some of the commands, if there's any differences, I'll uh, show you the different um, on the commands and I'll explain what are the differences. So without further ado, let me just go with the next uh, line here. I'm going to go back to the HTML page here. And then this HTML page basically is telling you that right here, I have uh, the preface, which is um, God bless my um, late brother, Dr. Haman Lutfi. Uh, he was uh, basically, um, uh, a, a cardiologist, uh, uh, God bless him. He passed away in 2029, uh, I mean, 2021 and, uh, on the 27th of January. And um, 
he's in uh, best place in heaven. Um, he helped a lot of people, inspired a lot of people. So I'm dedicating this book uh, under his name, Dr. Hamon Lutfi. And then I'm going to also talk about the operating system, Unix operating system. So chapter one is start with the um, invention of operating system, the Unix operating system invention. When you actually are on the website, if you go on the website and you just go in chapter one, it is uh, just the, the same PDF file. It says that you can click on this invention of uh, Unix. It is just actually taking you to the at and Bell Laboratory, uh, which all the credit uh, for the uh, image is giving to Nokia Bell Labs Institute because this is their image that um, Dennis Ritchie and uh, Tim, uh, Ken Thompson, the two pioneer that uh, they built uh, at and version of Unix on uh, Bell Laboratory in the Bell Laboratory and back on uh, 90, 69, 90, 70s. And so it is the invention is there and all the details are here as well. So you're welcome to go to the site and just uh, read it as well as um, if you're just uh, reading further information on Unix operating system, I provide you the Google site and the manual pages for mywebuniversity.com which is about 66,000 te uh, technical documentation that I wrote a Python program to create a uh, Solaris operating system, uh, technical documentation, Linux manual pages, um, Mac OS X, Darwin, which is also based on BSD, similar to uh, Solaris, and then also on Windows and PowerShell as well. So if you're looking for the Solaris, for example, operating system, that's about 13,000 technical documentation. You're welcome to read them and just understand them and uh, see the manual pages. Uh, this is just one uh, Python program that I wrote that it just basically like alpha to integer conversion. You can see this functions calls that are uh, happening here as well as if you're looking for a particular commands and Solaris operating system like that is not in Linux, like ZFS, Zettabyte File System, Control F, you just search it and then type in ZFS here, and then it will search uh, here and ZFS comes in and opens it, uh, open it here. You can uh, read the entire documentation here. So that is on the manual pages on technical documentation on this one, as well as you can get like Ubuntu PDF version and HTML version, and as well as Oracle Sun Solaris documentation, you can get a lot of these technical documentation, depending on where you are going here. Like for example, if I go to Oracle documentation, you can see the Oracle and documentation for uh, Sun Solaris and um, or Sun um, uh, Microsystem that was built by Sun Microsystem and it becomes Sun Solaris. Sun Solaris is uh, Solaris Express and uh, on the Spark and then. Also, they have um, the PDF file for other ones. So you're welcome to go to their documentation as well. So these are the uh, site that uh, you can get a read further. As well, you can search for these titles under Google or search engine or my web university, and you get ton tons of information for any of those related information. And if you go to chapter two, I uh, made the chapter two online for you. So you can start learning online without just um, having a Linux machine or a VM or a Docker or anything. Basically, you're uh, connecting to mywebuniversity.com. You go to chapter two, and I have a chapter two uh, that's the basic Unix and Linux commands. So you can uh, see that what is the command, the what is section, the manual pages, and then the examples. So for example, if you click on calendar, I show you that. Uh, calendar commands, uh, calendar commands say, uh, what is calendar, calendar display a calendar. And if you click on like, for example, Cal uh, 9070, this one, when you click on it, it just shows you the Cal 9070 in a uh, nice format here. You can see that January 1st, 9070 was the epoch calendar for Unix and uh, Unix operating system, which was uh, basically 1969, as I showed you at the Bell Laboratory by Dennis Ritchie, God bless him, and uh, Ken Thompson. And that Ken Thompson is also uh, uh, still developing on the Go language, uh, Golang. Uh, so he is a pioneer uh, programmer as well on that one. And then you can also get my uh, man manual pages on my 
uh, Python program that you could just, whatever a program you just do at my web university, you can get manual pages. For example, if you get the calendar, you just type in the command here and say, for example, uh, let's say uh, what we type in date command. So the date command, you just click on it and it will give you the date command. And if you're uh, interested on a system CTL command like a, a Linux Ubuntu related commands, you could get it here, anything. So if you're just doing a, a CANIF uh, command, a CANIF is a um, C uh, header file information that is defined on the standard IO, you can see here, it is there. Similarly, if you're doing like a printf statement, getting printf statement for uh, help on a printf statement. The, this is section one of manual pages, as you can see, man section one is shown. So this is section one is equivalent to say, um, minus S1 and then printf statement. That would just give you the same thing as if you just, the default one is finding section one. But if you want section three of the manual pages, then you say minus S3 printf, and that would show you the C library function calls of printf statement again uh, that are here. So uh, printf, S printf, and D printf, S printf, all of those ones are available here that are defined in, in the standard IO. H header file of C library, uh, C programming language. So this is just a, a little bit of information on the website that I showed you. If you're just interested to get documentation, so the documentation is available. And then um, right now I'm on the page of um, this one, we already looked at it. Uh, so I'm on uh, chapter two. Uh, and I was showing you that you have these options. So I clicked on the calendar and then showed the commands. Now I'm going to show you uh, each of these commands one by one so we can cover all the 33 commands. And that way we learn um, Linux basic commands, which is on chapter two of the book. And that uh, Unix and Linux is uh, chapter two. The uh, objective of this um, session on this video is to teach you basics of Unix and uh, Linux commands so that uh, if you're sitting in front of a Unix machine or a Linux machine, as a user, you know what to do. It's uh, not like you don't have to do system administrative work or higher level um, admin kind of work, but at least you can um, browse uh, around on the directory level, uh, read the files, uh, look at the content of it, get help, and then uh, do a lot of a number of uh, things that a normal user can do. And then on uh, chapter three of my book, in chapter four, we get to intermediate in uh, chapter four advanced level. That way you can learn advanced level of uh, the Unix on chapter four. I have already actually um, uh, prepared this one. So if I go on um, my book and this um, PDF version is not available uh, yet on the uh, chapter three and four, because I want uh, people that they are subscribing to watch these videos so they can get it as a perks uh, for the PDA version. Uh, so um, it is uh, giving you something in return of just subscribing and watching the channel and learning. So this uh, chapter three is the intermediate and chapter four advanced. But even if you are just a subscriber, you already have all these commands and videos that I have uh, put here, like eight videos for uh, eight of these rows. Uh, for each of these rows, I have eight videos. Similarly, for chapter um, uh, three, I have uh, videos that, that are just covering the entire chapter three. And then it's right here and there. And all these videos you can watch. Similarly, for chapter two, chapter two, but the version that I'm doing right now is kind of an improved version of this one with the PDF file an HTML file, everything that is available. So that way you can uh, go to the site and learn it one by one and then watch it and uh, practice it here. So let's go back here on this session. We're going to go to our uh, first um, example here. Uh, I'm showing you the uh, what is banner. Banner, print large uh, banners. So, and then you could write any command in front of the banner command any um, kind of like a string and it will just print it for you. Uh, 
So here I'm showing you banner piece for all. And when you type banner piece for all, and this is the output. As a demo, let me clear my screen here. So I'm going to clear the screen here and say uh, banner. And then I say uh, piece for all. So when you do this one, if I just uh, make this screen larger, obviously it will show uh, the format, but notice that uh, even with this screen, and that this is what I wrote, peace uh, for all, and then it says peace for all, and you can see that it's uh, there. So if I control, uh, clear the screen or control L, then I go to the next command here and says hello world. And then you can see that um, I wrote hello world here. So all you're doing is say uh, banner and then hello uh, world. So let's just do the exact same wording. So the wording that you do here is matter of what you type in. Hello word and hello word and you see that it's there. Similarly, control L and clear screen say banner. I love to uh, play uh, football. And then uh, here that it will uh, display, I love to play football. You can see I love to play football. And football is big, so you just could uh, increase it and then it will show the uh, format that I love to play football because of the screen resolution was too small. On the size, I had minimized it. Now it is uh, just when, when you write I, I love to play football here, it just says that I love to play football. And then if I clear my screen and say clear a screen and I say uh, banner and then I say a banner and then say uh, my web university, my web uh, university. Uh, so let's just try it in two words, my web university. And you can see that the university fits there. If it is uh, more than one, uh, the string is too long, it will not fit. And then it, my web you uh, never, and then after that one is truncated. So make sure that if you're writing a long word, like I uh, love to play football. Notice that this one, even though uh, you uh, wrote it in uh, separate uh, characters, it put it there. But if you put it as one argument, as this if it's dollar sign arc one, uh, or dollar sign one in this case, then it will just uh, not uh, display it in a format that you want. Because it just says, I love to, and then uh, the rest of them get truncated. If you want to see everything, you just have to just make sure that they're separated by space and then a banner will uh, address it there because the size is really big uh, on this one. So let me just clear my screen here. I'm going to resize it back to the size that I had here and I'm going to uh, just uh, move this one a little bit here on this corner and then uh, go to the next one here. So uh, a small one, you could say banner A or banner Wahid. So if you just write something like that, it's a banner Lutfi. Any uh, string that you just do, it uh, writes it for you. Banner the direct path to Linux Ubuntu. Clear screen and say banner the direct path uh, to Linux Ubuntu. Since these are separate, you can see that if I just uh, maximize it, clear my screen and just run this command, you could see that it uh, looks nice on the actual bigger screen. So that direct path to Linux Ubuntu, you will see that one. And then when you uh, resize it here, now let's see if there's more example, the banner example is done. And also I'm showing you the manual pages on the banner. So clearing a screen and say man banner. Since banner, I'm going to um, make bigger size here and say clear um, a screen man. Man gives you the, uh, whatever command you do, the manual pages. Like earlier, I was showing you that pr uh, printf statement and uh, other commands. So man, basically banner is a small, I already included on the actual PDF file. When you're learning the manual pages, uh, read the see also section, because any related commands that are there, it will show you. For example, let's say I say man printf statement. Notice that when I go at the end, 
There's a see also section. It says uh, you can also see section three for uh, printf statement. So you can say man minus s uh, three printf statement, and it will give you some, this. Now the see also section of this one might say that printf uh, section one, and that is related. So uh, if you go on this one, you can see it is showing you section one. But because section uh, three has the header file, a standard IO, like a scan F is there, put S there, all of these related co command ASF printf statement, they're showing there on the section three of them. So since um, a scan F or put S uh, is uh, section three, if I do man put S automatically, it just reads the section three of the podest command and standard IO. Similarly, uh, with man pages, there's info. Info podest uh, will just also give you uh, similar commands. And then with man pages, you can also do man minus K podest, for example. Uh, show me all the keywords that matches the string podest. So the man page is very useful command. And uh, when I'm showing you this in one session, I'm basically teaching you one command that you could uh, learn anything in uh, Linux. So anything you want to learn, uh, you just read the entire section and then go read the uh, see also section. So uh, for example, man, uh, let's say calendar command. The calendar command, you can see that related commands for see also section is calendar and then strength of time. So you could get a lot of details on those ones. Let me just um, clear again and then just go back to this small size. And then we covered man and I'm just showing you because the output was a little bit. So I showed you the see also section, the synopsis and the name, the description. All of those are uh, I highlighted in uh, bold so you can understand it, what uh, the manual pages produces output for you. And then here I'm also showing you the section that I showed you uh, for section one or two or three, whatever. So for example, if I say man mount, mount is section eight, and you can see it is section eight here. So I could just do man minus S and then eight mount would do that one. And the reason that it's already finding that one when I do man mount, it's already knowing that the section eight is because this directory user share uh, man, this directory is full of these files. So let me just uh, make this screen bigger. If I just do ls minus l here, you can see man one through man eight. So under the man one, uh, everything that has uh, there has a, uh, an, uh, a section number and then guns a file for it. So for example, if I just say ls minus l um, printf statement, star printf, then you can see that if there's anything here under man one, uh, if I just do that one under man one, you will see this uh, printf. So by default, when I say man printf, it's gonna just say, oh, there's a section one on it. And so it's gonna just open this gun zip file and untar it and then uh, uh, ungun zip it and then just read it for me in section one and it will display this. Similarly, if I go to, um, uh, man three so there's uh we saw the put this stuff uh, let me just uh, uh put the asterisk here so you can see the put this there dot uh, section three is there for this so if i just say put s and then uh, just do that these are the commands that are there put this dot three so and uh, similarly if um i go for a scan if uh, clear the screen ls minus l scanf. So scanf, you can see that the scanf uh, sec section three is there. If I want to make it more specific to only show any command that has uh, these three uh, letters, then I could just do that one also. But because the fs scanf is there, uh, vfs scanf is there, so we get a bigger list. Similarly for uh, printf statement. Printf statement, you can see all the section three are here. Similarly, if I go to man um, eight, for example, we showed you the amount command. So all these commands are section eight uh, commands. So if I just say, for example, man, uh, let's say uh, one of these, uh, uh, let's say the shorter one, we could type in zek. Zek, you can see that uh, time zone compile, and then it's section eight. So that is how the manual pages 
knows that there's a there's a file uh, called zek and dot uh, something dot a dot gunset and that's how it opens it there so automatically they uh, formatted the file in a way that it could help the manual page to understand it similarly like mount uh, dot eight so you can see mount dot eight is there when you do man uh, mount automatically knows section eight but if you just want to help it you could say uh, man minus s eight and then uh, mount so that's how it is going to find that. And then clear screen, if you do, for example, the mount, um, man minus K mount, you can see all the related commands that are there. Since it's a lot, I'm going to do another command. Let's say uh, scanf. You can see that there's a section three uh, only. If I do a printf statement, there's section one as well as section three. So all these are section three, but if I just do a uh, uh, grip minus V uh, three. So we only see section one, this minus V grip out uh, what is uh, uh, on three, it's not gonna display on three. But if I just wanna see the three minus uh, uh, itself grip it, it will show the section threes. So you can see one command is on both section one as well as section three and there. So let me just, um, Control L here and then CD to my home directory. I don't have to be on a particular directory, but um, it's better to just be shorter uh, on a directory uh, name. So I'm going to just do that. And then here, I'm going to show you that what is calendar command. So calendar command is uh, just by itself, you type in, it's gonna show you the calendar of uh, uh, this month, which Right now, it's on already in Eastern time. It's um, uh, basically uh, about 1.18 a.m. Uh, New York time. But uh, because my web server that is there, the host name is uh, on uh, somewhere in the East uh, turn uh, time. So it's in the cloud and it is uh, uh, Linux Ubuntu uh, server. And then just uh, uh, basically uh, that is what it is. So you can see that um, it is a Linux Ubuntu server. Uh, so calendar, when you type in um, clear the screen, calendar by itself, it gives you the current month. And if you want it in a Julian format, you type in calendar minus J, it gives you the same data in Julian format. Okay, so here I'm showing you the calendar and then calendar in Julian format, and then calendar 19070. For example, if you want to see calendar uh, 1st January 90. 70, which is the epoch uh, calendar of Unix, it is started on Tuesday. And then so you can see that uh, and the Unix calendar epoch started on uh, uh, Thursday, actually, Thursday, January 1st, 1970. So then uh, you can also do like uh, clear the screen. Let me make it a bit bigger. So you can say calendar 2023. So the entire year, you can see the calendar here and there. And if you want it in a Julian format, again, you say calendar minus J 2023, that would give you a Julian format. And then you can also do other ca calendar commands. So on the uh, things uh, I could say calendar here, the current month, but if I say calendar minus A after three months after uh, the current month, this is the current month is January, three months after would be February, March and April. Similarly, if I just say calendar instead of A, I say before three months. So the current month is uh, January, then the three months before that one would be December, November, and so. So this number, you could just put five or whatever number, how many months you wanna see, you could do that. Similarly for the uh, after, five months after you could uh, get it. And if you want like a calendar of anything that is a clear screen calendar of the zero, zero, 001, that year, that is like so many years. And then if you want something in calendar command as uh, like uh, 2050. So uh, in the future, you can see that one. So if you say calendar 1 2050, you can see that uh, January 1st, uh, it uh, falls on uh, on the 2050 on the Saturday. So you can uh, see that one. And if you are interested in someone's uh, birthday, you could say, for example, 2 you say, well, uh, if the person was born on a particular date, you can see, okay, this one uh, is uh, uh, 
uh, someone's birthday at that de date or that uh, birthday, whatever is that date that you select, you can see that uh, on that month. So let me clear that one. And then I could just also uh, look for uh, more information here that I provided you. The before three and after three, you, we already looked at it. And then calendar eight, uh, five, we already looked at it. And the next command I'm showing you is the cat command. The cat command is concatenate a content of a file. In this case, I'm showing you the uh, ETC network file. So let me just do a, a couple of the cat commands here. And as you can see, like cat minus n display the, the file with uh, line numbers. So that file is two line numbers that shows a, a line number. If I just say cat by itself, it's going to show that one. And if I just make the screen bigger here and then do the same thing, you can see that the file is there and cat minus n is going to just uh, show you that. Similarly, if you say os dash release, it is going to show you, but if you just say, uh, show me in line number, how many line numbers there, so uh, 12. And you can also say cat ATC OS dash release and do, and do a word count minus L, that would say 12. And if you do the uh, line number, you can see there's 12 lines. And then similarly, the cat command, you can see right here, there's no end of line. But if I just say, show me and the content of it with EA, meaning that everything uh, on the, uh, uh, dollar sign ended with a dollar sign, it will show that one. And A is if there's any tab or anything, you will see the OXA, um, uh, the ASCII and character equivalent uh, to tab in a non-visible format. And you can also do that one with BIM and um, octal dumb. So if you just look at the octal dumb, octal dumb minus, um, minus C for the character, you can see the new line characters are all right here, but uh, slash n. And then if there's any tab, it would be slash t. The new line characters are showing here. So if you say clear screen, octal dump uh, minus c, it is c networks, then you can see that this has uh, new line characters here. And then um, there's no tabs here, but uh, it would be slash t for the tabs uh, there. And then similarly uh, here, minus um, cat minus EA will show you the lines with the end of line uh, there. So that is uh, how it uh, shows here. But let me just show you on the docs what we have here. So when we are looking at the cat, I'm just showing you some of these options here that are there. And then looking at the content of those files without the uh, line numbers and also the OS release file, we looked at it here. And then uh, the EA option, which is um, end of line with uh, terminating. Uh, there's sometimes uh, on Windows uh, files that you uploaded, if you don't convert it to DOS to Unix, the new line character would be a cache uh, return slash R and then slash N together. And then when you are inside a VEM or uh, octal dump or the cat minus E, it will be C control M characters with dollar sign at the end of it. That is also possible that you can see it. And these commands are on Unix and Linux works the same way. The only one that is the OS release is, uh, for example, on uh, Solaris, you can see the uh, ETC release file to look at the content of that file. So some of the differences is very minor. You can always uh, look at the content of it. The configuration for, uh, file on the ETC directory or the only differences between the operating systems. The rest of these commands mostly works the same way, like calendar, clear, date, all these commands works on Mac, um, OS X, uh, BSD version, BSD, FreeBSD, Solaris, uh, and then Unix, Red Hat, um, uh, Linux, Red Hat, um, CentOS, uh, Rocky version, uh, Ubuntu version, all of them. Whether it's Linux, Unix, or um, Unix BSD, all of them are working with these commands, date and uh, SU, and all those ones similarly. So we are um, already on the uh, clear command. Uh, we have uh, covered cat command. Now we're going to cover the clear command. And clear command is so simple. You can just uh, clear, uh, and it will clear your screen. If you do a command df-h, uh, you just Type in clear, it does it. If you do ls 
So I clear the screen, ls minus l, and then you just uh, do control l is equivalent to clear command. Who is uh, there, df dash h, and then a clear command there. ls, and then you see this one. You could also do two t put clear. That's equivalent to clear. So uh, whether t put clear, um, let's say ls and minus l, uh, clear screen command or ls, and then t put clear, it's the same thing. So those ones are going to allow you. So you can uh, clear your screen three ways at least uh, without creating an alias. If you create an alias, you say alias C is equal clear. Now you say LS and then you just type in C, it will just clear the thing because you, alias C is there as clear. So you just define it. If you just say an alias uh, C, now alias uh, C is not there. No, you don't have any alias uh, that defined. If you type in C, it's not going to say command not found. But if you say alias uh, C is equal uh, clear or uh, clear, and then you just say C and it will just clear it. Alias now there and alias and C is there. So if I don't an alias it, and instead of every time I just type in uh, clear or press control L, some people say, why didn't you just do control L? It's just still I'm pressing two characters. But if I just say LS and then say C, it's one character. So it's a, your choice how you uh, want to uh, make it easy for you. Do you want to type uh, less keystroke? Uh, you're welcome to do so. So uh, let's just uh, minimize this one. We go back to uh, the clear, recover, T put clear, and date command. Date command, I'm just giving you a number of uh, date options here. You can see here the date by itself, you just uh, run the date command. And if you type in date with a uh, timestamp of the date that you wanna uh, format it, um, you can do that. Uh, you can put a new uh, date or touch a file, you can change the file. So and like, for example, date is this, if I say touch this, now this file just got created. The time for stamp of this uh, file is this based on the time that I have. So if I just um, make this a screen here big and I say stat on this, now you can see that timestamp, everything is already here with access modification time and then uh, change time and so on. All that uh, information is there. At the same time, this file is right here. And you can see that uh, 129 is showing you 129 here. That was uh, the first time it was created, date of creation. And whenever you write the file, so if you just see the time changed, for example, 130, now if I say echo uh, this uh, file changed, and then I just uh, write a greater sign this, now I just uh, change the content of that file with the new timestamp. Notice that was 129 and it is 130. So uh, if a date changes, uh, whatever the timestamp that you write to that file, the content of that file, it's one line only. So it will show line one that this uh, file changed. But if I just uh, say date again, notice that it's uh, 34. It is still not uh, this, but it is 130 here. And then the timestamp of the start of this, you can see that it is um, 130 here, but the timestamp was this. So now if I just write this file and say, this file changed, um, changed for the second time. And then I'm just going to double uh, greater sign so I could write the content of that file to see that it was overwritten. Now notice that at 131, uh, it got modified again. So if I do a start of this, it is there. And then if I look at the, that's the change that it was happening. And if I just say cut minus n this, now you see that the line two had the second time information. So date is uh, the file that you're modifying it. And if you want to get certain format from it, you can just say echo, I'm sorry, echo. You could say date, and then this is the format like plus, and then percentage is going to say, if I want to see month and then per, uh, slash after that one, or a dash. Uh, in that case, I give a uh, slash. And in this case, I'm going to put a slash here percentage a day and then dash and then percentage. But if I do Y in uppercase, then it's gonna uh, write the entire full year. So all you have to do is if you just wanna separate it by 
uh, slashes, you can do it by slashes. That's just the format it is there. And then here I'm uh, giving you more examples of the date command. On my website also, I'm uh, showing you some of the date command. So when you become a switch user, the uh, time protocol uh, NTPD and the network time protocol daemon, if it is running, your uh, timestamp will be always accurate. PS minus EFA, grep minus I, NTPD. So NTPD is running, and then I can just uh, make sure that NTPQ minus P will just uh, sync it. So you could see that it is uh, syncing properly. And uh, let me clear the screen here, quit out of here, clear the screen or C, and then say uh, PS minus EF, grep minus I, NTPD. And then since that one is running, there's a file etc ntp dot com file that I'm uh, just basically uh, syncing the uh, 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 restrict one twenty seven and then all the servers everything with it. So if I just say ntp q minus p, uh, you can see that it is uh, syncing properly. And then ntp q uh, if you do it by itself, you get a list of help and then peers uh, would be. And just showing you uh, similar to the one that NTP and Q minus P for peers. So you could get a lot of those details also. Uh, let me just um, come back here, make sure that we are just under one session, what uh, maybe uh, close to one hour. So the date command we covered, uh, the echo command. The echo is pretty simple. Whatever you want to uh, type in on the screen, if you just say echo, for example, echo, this is a test. And then you could just do that one. If you just say, um, instead of this is a test, you say echo minus E for expression, you could say, uh, welcome to my YouTube, uh, YouTube, youtube.com um, slash at my web university. So this one, if you say that one, it's just gonna say that one. But then if you say, send that uh, a new, I'm sorry, a new uh, line character here, you could see that it is just giving you a new line character by carriage return. And if you just say, uh, just give it like, for example, here, a new line character here. And then you could just say, break it after welcome to my, and then after my uh, YouTube channel. And then here you could just say my channel, so uh, like, let's say uh, you say my channel here together. Uh, notice that if you type in my channel here, this is going to be like, uh, welcome to my channel. And then uh, normally you put a space here. Uh, you put a space here and then you just uh, run it in there. But if you don't wanna put a space and you're trying to force a tab, you say alternate T and that would be a tab here. And then, um, if I just say cut minus EA, that notice that this one, I piped that one to another um, uh, channel. And then right here, what I was showing you earlier uh, was saying that tab is uh, produced as control um, tab, and then it is going to do that one. So uh, let me just uh, clear the screen here, show you a couple of tabs. So if I say here, uh, tab one, and then I press uh, slash T and then tap two and then slash T and then say uh, new line, new line, a uh, new uh, line one and slash N and then a uh, new line two and slash N. Just to show you those uh, three lines, you can see here because I did not put the minus E for expression to just uh, resolve that expression, reevaluate it. So you could just say that uh, it was not showing, uh, it was showing. But now my uh, slash T is resolving to tabs here. But you don't know that tab in the space here. So in order to do that one, you could say cut minus EA, and you could see that there's a uh, control tab here, control tab here, and then dollar sign is new line, dollar sign here, dollar sign here at the end. So all these dollar signs that are invisible, it is uh, showing on those uh, information. You can also send this information to a file and you say send it to a file called uh, test.txt. So uh, then test.txt, 
that you just created, you can see that there's uh, these uh, slash tabs and other ones. It is not showing here, but if you say set list, and then you can see that uh, actually the control tab here and then the new line characters here. So you could do those ones, okay? So let me just quit out of this. And then um, cat minus EA of test.txt will also show you that same information with uh, control tabs here and that one. So you can pipe it here or you can just concatenate it there as well. And then octal dump, octal dump of minus C of test.txt, you can see that one also does uh, control uh, I, which is a tab, is showing here as slash T. Control I is showing slash T. The new line character is a slash N, new line character slash N. Wherever you have new line character will show as a slash N, wherever you have uh, tab characters slash T. So depending on what utility you use, and there's the different ways of seeing the same kind of here. You can see here, it shows under the vim and under the cat command, under control I, inside the octal dumb, it shows us slash T or uh, tabs. These are called invisible characters that are only uh, seen by certain arguments of the option cat, vim, or uh, for example, on the vim uh, test, the text, when you open it, it will not show, but if you uh, say set list, then it will show. For example, if I don't want to see the line number, set no and you, and the line number goes away. And then say set uh, no list, it will just uh, that those tabs or set list and shows tabs and new line characters. Qu uh, quit out of this one, we're done. So clear the screen here or see, uh, it is uh, the same thing. See, it's going to clear the screen. Let's just uh, resize this one and then. The echo command, we showed a number of examples. Head command is just uh, shows you the head of a file. And then tail is the opposite, the tail of a file. A certain number of um, files uh, uh, input by default is going to come. So if you say head, uh, head uh, etc uh, os dash release, it's going to show that many lines. And that might be um, all together, maybe uh, ten. The first ten lines it uh, head by default shows, but if you say head minus twelve, etc os dash release, it will show the entire files. And if you say word count minus l etc os dash release, you can see it is twelve lines here. So let me clear the screen and do this. Since it's twelve lines, I could say head minus five of them on etc os dash release, and instead of the ten, that's by default. I just want to see only five. So if I just don't give any parameter, it reads the 10. How do I know the 10? It would count minus L as 10. And then how do I know the entire file list? We did the word count minus L here, and it's going to give you 12. So head is uh, just uh, very uh, helpful to just uh, see a large file. You can see a portion of it. Tail is the opposite. So clear the screen. If I say tail, uh, etc os dash release, you can see that it is uh, doing the last uh, 10 uh, lines. And if you say uh, tail minus two, it only shows the last two lines. So you could uh, just specify whichever size you want. And then um, sometimes you're interested to read the first two lines of a file. You can say head minus two etc os release. Uh, this is only going to give you, but what if you wanted line three through uh, five? So you could say, you give me the first five lines here with uh, this, and now you're interested with this only, and then you could just say now till, uh, till minus three. So now you're just only getting the last three. So line uh, one and two it will be filtered out. So the head and tail, you can do use combination of them to help yourself. Um, what else, uh, host name. Host name is very useful command on the operating system. So when you uh, are uh, running the host name command here, it just shows you uh, on the host operating system. If you say host name followed by mywebuniversity.com, let's say it will change the operating system, the host name. You just have to make sure that host name is not mistyped. And then it will uh, make sure that if you root, you can do that one. So if I just put a sudo in front of this one, 
pseudo and then I change it, it will change it. But then also I could do after that one a host ID based on this host name that is currently I have set it, uh, host name that I have currently set it, I can say host ID, it will just uh, generate a hexadecimal number that is uh, the ID of that host. But um, the actual file that you set up the host name is on etc host name here and also the etc host uh, there. So all the equivalent information here that uh, either the host name is my web university, myweb.university.com or whatever, I could just do those ones on the host name. So host ID also I showed you there. Let me just go back here and then look at host ID. It just, in this case, I was on a Solaris machine. I wanted to uh, give the host name Solaris. When I did the host name uh, ID, originally it was well, the new name, uh, I changed it and then I said, uh, host name my Solaris, and then now when I type in the host name, it will uh, do this one. This will not preserve on the reboot. You have to do it as root, and then you have to also modify the ATC host file and all the related configuration file because on the network, sometimes on ATC says config network dash scripts, there's a lot of files. ATC says uh, config, uh, sorry, clear screen, ATC, and then um, LD uh, says config, uh, etc, network, uh, net, work, and dash scripts. And uh, let me just, uh, um, ls minus L, etc, says config. I believe it says config, says config. Uh, let me just clear screen. Okay, so, and the way you find out the actual path on Ubuntu, it might be a different naming. So what we could do is look for fconfig minus A. It is just showing you that one and then Ethernet zero is the interface. So um, if I just say um, cat, not cat, F C F config, F config Ethernet uh, zero, this is gonna show me the IP address that is there. Then I can do a find command. So I can say find etc. Uh, minus name star minus type f for f uh, is a regular file and then um, I could say minus exact and then grip minus il I'm getting out of uh, the basic to intermediate or advanced but uh, let's just uh, show you how to find a file that has this number ip address uh, there so um, once you find the path to that file you can see that a lot of files are there, etc host is there. And then some of them says the permission denied because I'm not uh, root. So when I when I just change it, and then you can see that uh, if I do uh, sudo su dash, and then I type in. Now go back to the directory etc clear screen. And then this time I'm going to run the same command with find dot minus name, uh, and then a star minus type, a regular file, uh, and then minus exact, grep minus il, and then I just put the uh, IP address and then say this, I could put, put a plus, it's the same thing. So minus exact is the C is missing here. You just type in minus exact. And notice that uh, on this one on Ubuntu, it is not, under the uh, sysconfig, that's uh, Linux Red Hat. So networks uh, there and then CD ATC to network, network, and then um, here are the interface files. So the interface uh, file has all the uh, uh, cat interfaces. That file has the IP address and the host name and all the details that it set, sets your network address and there. Um, so and that is basically the network configuration file. I'm not uh, sure why did I have to do this one. Uh, there was something that I wanted to explain on ETCOS release, uh, my web university, fconfig dash A. Okay. If, if I um, remember what we were doing and then I will just uh, come back to it. But at this time I could continue with this one so we can 
finish what we were going to show you. The host command is also similar. So it uh, shows you, you can run the host and then what is host that DNS look up on the thing. And then you can see here, host mywebuniversity.com or host Google, it will just tell you. So if I just say host um, google.com, it will just give you host www.mywebuniversity.com. It will show you the IP address and then host uh, let's say amazon.com, amazon.com. It will just show you uh, yahoo.com, anything. You could say oracle.com, and then uh, it will just give you the IP address of that host and um, the primary, similarly to like an NS lookup or DIG command. So let's uh, look at uh, what is ID. Host as uh, ID, it identifies yourself. So in this case, since I'm logged on as root, if I clear my screen and I say ID, it's a root. You can see that it's there. So I can say ID root is also going to show. And get end um, password uh, root and will do the same thing and uh, saying that you have a user ID of zero in this. If I exit out of this one and I say ID, now I'm WLP, it will do this one. ID WLP will say the same thing. Get end password and WLP will do this one. ID minus N will uh, do a conjunction with uh, the U. So I say ID minus UN will just have to say, show me a number rather than ID minus, um, ID by itself will show you the numbers. ID uh, minus uh, N will show you uh, nothing, but you have to do ID minus U to get the 1000. But if you do minus UN, show me a name. So that would do the same thing. Similarly, what um, other ones like a group and other uh, stuff. So ID dash G will give you the group ID and ID dash G U will give you uh, U, uh, group uh, N, group N and, and names. And so you could see that one. ID dash G, it gives you a number, but if you say ID dash N G, uh, the name will just show you the name. Okay, so let's uh, look at the more example here. And then ID dash G and ID U A, all of them are showing you this. ID dash A gives you all of them and U for user and G for group. And then uh, uppercase G is also give you the uh, output uh, for 1000 for the entire group. Uh, so uh, what uh, info? The info command is similar to man pages and you should uh, go to through these examples. It's a little bit um, more kind of uh, descriptive, but you can also uh, click on these uh, man pages. So on each one of them, I'm showing you, for example, if you're going here and you want to uh, just get into the man pages here, you could actually go to the man pages on the mywebuniversity.com because this is HTML part. I could just say, okay, I am already there on the man the page. So if I just say, for example, ID, here I could click on ID and then uh, right here, when you say man ID, it will just actually open the ID command for the man, uh, man pages. Man pages for the ID command, okay? And similarly for the info and similarly for the other ones uh, here. So man uh, info, um, clear the screen. Uh, info, info, for example, ID, it will give you information on the ID. Uh, clear screen info. What is command? It, it tells you what is the info for it. Well, the info is similar to man pages, basically. So let's go to the next one. We already uh, went to info, and then um, paste command is almost like uh, cut and paste, but it's pasting it in the content of one file um, next to each other horizontally. So echo content, the one file, file one has this one, file two has this other one. Now you are looking at the two file. When you cut the content of the two file, but then when you put them together, notice paste of file one dot text and file two dot text uh, is pasting them together next to each other. So you are welcome to practice this one. I'll just show you uh, one uh, short example. Here I'm showing you uh, like if you paste it uh, and the two files into a third file and then you can display it. So you can concatenate with using greater uh, sign also. But the paste command itself is uh, just basically a very useful command. So if I say 
that test text. Uh, let me just uh, go back to the directory where I had it and uh, say test text. Uh, yeah, the file is uh, cat test text has these files. And if I just say echo, let me just uh, rewrite the file. Echo, uh, this is uh, line one. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to just say uh, test.txt. So now um, send this one to the file test.txt. Now the test.txt has only this is line one. So if I want to put another uh, file and say uh, copy um, test um, uh, dot text and then uh, call it test two dot text and then now uh, cat test uh, two dot text this is a one file the content of them are the same and then test is uh, the also uh, same thing but if I now I say cat uh, actually paste uh, test dot text and test dot text and then uh, send them and uh, the output uh, both of them to a file test three dot text now uh, notice test three dot text is a combination of the two file put uh, line uh, the two lines put next to each other even though they say line one this is line one for both of them yeah it is true because if I just say minus uh, n it's only one line in there so paste and put them horizontally next to each other paste them together that's what paste does. And then you can also um, paste that uh, into uh, like um, uh, another file or third file created or however you want to do it. The options are uh, a lot here. Um, so paste the way, uh, cut it, cut the file and paste the file in there. Uh, let's do the uh, process command. The process command are very useful. So here we are just showing you the PS command. By default, if you just type in PS, it shows you your main processes. And if you just do a PS minus U root, for user root, you can do all the system related processes. And here are the scheduler system D and all the kernel stuff there. And then um, if you look for process minus P, process ID one, two, three, you can separate it by comma and I'm showing you here. Similarly, if you're looking for Apache web server, you could do that one. So let me just uh, show you uh, some of them on uh, the command line. So you could say ps minus EFA, grip minus I, HTTPD, you could see that one. Or grip minus I, Apache this. And if you just say, uh, show me everything but Apache minus V. So the other process are there. Clear screen, ps minus, uh, uh, minus U. And then uh, if you just say root, it will show all the root uh, processes here. And then if you just uh, did, did a grep uh, for minus I system uh, D related or something, you could get all the system D uh, here. So the process ID in there. Clear the screen and say uh, PS by itself, it will show you the system processes and that uh, I have here. So if I just uh, say echo dollar sign, dollar sign, it shows that bash I started. If I just start another bash, now I say, um, uh, just run this command ps. Now I have one subshell open under the bash here. And if I just go to corn shell, I'm on a corn shell. And if I just say ps, notice that I'm on a corn shell here. If I type in seashell, I'm on a seashell. And then ps of that one, it will show that one uh, as seashell. So uh, echo dollar sign, dollar sign, it shows my uh, process is the seashell ID. If I exit out of that one, now I'm on the corn shell ID, and then I say echo dollar sign, dollar sign, you could see it's pointing this one. Exit out of that one, I'm on bash, and then if I just uh, say echo dollar sign, dollar sign, it is showing the bash, uh, 110, 10, and then it will uh, do that one, and if I exit out of that one, I'm on the main process that I started this shell, and then that's uh, this one. If I exit this one, the terminal will be closed. And who uh, I am right here, you can see the PTS one is this one is the equivalent to that one. Uh, who uh, am I? You can see that I'm coming from there. So uh, later on, I'll cover the who and other ones. So you can see that these options are there. And then PWD is print working directory, the current working directory. It is uh, whatever is the directory you are, you just see that print working directory here. Say if I go to programs, 
and I save programs, uh, CD to Python, uh, Python, and then I'm PWD there. CD dot dot, and, and now I'm on program files, I do this one, CD dot dot. Now I'm back on my home directory. I go to dot dot, and then uh, current directory home, dot out, and then PWD. If I just type in by default, CD, it's going to take me to my home directory. So CD slash um, PWD, and then it drops me to the root. And then if I do LS, uh, it's all the root uh, partition file system uh, related files. So PWD here, echo uh, dollar sign PWD is the same thing as a current working directory that you're pointing. So if I do CD here, now I'm on the uh, home directory, echo dollar sign PWD is um, back to the new directory. Go to programs, uh, echo dollar sign, PWD or uh, PWD will be just equivalent to that one. Echo dollar sign home, on the other hand, is pointing to this. So no matter where I am, if I say CD uh, to dollar sign home, it will take me to that uh, home directory. And if I just say CD to programs, uh, Python or C++, let's go to C++. And now I type in PWD, now I am on C++, but if I say CD and uh, enter, I'm already, as if I say, echo to the home directory of this and PWD, echo dollar sign PWD is the same thing, okay? So a number of ways you can uh, use the PWD and those environment variables. To get a list of all the environment variables, so you type in ENB, clear screen, ENB, grep minus I PWD, it will, and show the PWD environment variable and the last uh, uh, print working directory, old one that you were there. So if I just, um, I'm on the last one here, uh, there, I'm gonna go to programs and then, uh, sorry, CD to programs. And then I just run the same command uh, with this. You can see the last one now it was programs. Uh, I mean, home directory uh, here. So if I CD to uh, dot dot, slash C++, then uh, let me see where I'm, okay, I'm on the, uh, you have to be relative to where you are. I thought that I was on the uh, Python directory. So C++, no, now you can see this one. If you just say ENV and grep minus I PWD, notice that my um, old one was uh, this one programs. And then now my current one is this, so. Those are the details of uh, how you can trace your commands on uh, where you are and how you can get relative to where you wanna be. So PWD, we covered that one. That uh, this uh, Git current working directory is similar. Uh, it is uh, just also a Python and um, uh, C uh, header files or uh, a function that is on, defined on the standard header files, uh, get current working directory that gives you and the uh, current working directory here. So if you just load on Python like OS module, you could uh, get that one there, yeah. What is Uname? Uh, Uname is basically give you the details of this. Here, I'm going to just show you the Uname basically as giving you system information uh, on the uh, current kernel. And then there's a number of arguments. Each of these arguments I'll show you on this example. And then if you wanna get uh, these ones, uh, there's example here that I'm showing you, uh, all of that one in detail. And um, uh, then I'm gonna cover this. Let's see, clear the screen here, CD here, clear the screen. And so you name, you name minus A for all you get this one. You name minus N node name, you name dash S system name, you name and dash operating system, and the GNU Linux, you name and dash R for revision, you name and dash P for processor, you name dash M for machine type, you name and dash, um, you name dash dash kernel uh, name, it's going to also give you the Linux name, uh, and then you name uh, the kernel name, and then Unix dash dash processor, uh, I'll give you that one. And then uh, as well, uh, processor is architecture or machine type or dash P, uh, the same thing. So clearing this screen, you name dash dash help will produce all the output that I just showed you. Minus high is the hardware and then other ones 
kernel version. If you just want the kernel version, you name dash V will give you, uh, sorry, a U name. I have to type it correctly. Dash V will just the kernel this. And then you can see also cat etc OS dash release is the operating system release version. In this case, Ubuntu 22.04, long-term support that shows you all that detail, okay? And then the less command is just basically whatever uh, command that you do, you can get uh, like certain information on it. In this case, I'm giving you some of the examples of the less command uh, with the first uh, 80 lines, because a lot of the things that you can do uh, with uh, less command inside the VAM, you can just uh, see these options. You can search and you can move up and down and all the things using the list command similar to vim or vi or other things so if you just let's say for example man um let's say printf a statement then followed by a list here you can see that it's prompting me one screen at a time so then i can search for a particular character or i can go to a line numbers i can type in q for quit and uh, just go to that one or i can just say less etc os release since this file is not too big, it's going to just stop at the end of it uh, for me to do something. And if I say search and then I search for ID, I, it will just identify those ones. So you could do uh, with the less, uh, you can move around and stuff and then search for something else and then HTTPS and then you it will uh, identify those ones. When you're done with it, you could just type in quit, a Q for quit and it will quit for it. So man less, it will just give you all the details and you can see these options are there um, as well as uh, these uh, control C uh, character escape sequence and all search that I just showed you with the question mark uh, searching backward uh, from the bottom to the top and then slash would search. Uh, however you wanna do it, that's all details are here on the man pages that I already printed for you. You're welcome to read it. The ls command is just list uh, the files. So uh, let me just uh, speed up a little bit. I think some of these uh, commands are very intuitive. You could read it and uh, just basically <clears throat> give you a cup. <clears throat> if I just type in ls, it list it. If I do ls minus l, uh, give you a long listing. ls minus ld, uh, for example, let's say a file called snap. It's a directory I could do just only show the directory and then um, don't show me the content. LS minus L snap will just show the content of it. That is how um, minus D. LS minus LTR shows the files that last was updated uh, in the bottom of your uh, long listing. Uh, LS minus LTR, L is listing, TR in uh, timestamp and reverse order and then in the name of the file test star, you can see that those files are there. So uh, with LS, you can also get the wild characters and uh, other formats. Uh, there's a number of uh, examples here. I'm showing you here, let's star.py will show you all the Py files, dot .py extension, and this ls star.sh and star.txt will show you files that are um, dot .shell or dot .text extension. And then here's the output. Here's the ls minus l long listing. Long listing, meaning that it is giving you all that. I know the structure for the file timestamp, the modification access, the ownership, the group, the and date that was created and so on. The name of the file and the size of it, all the detail. And this is also giving you like a, a directory structure by the names and uh, different formats. LS minus LI is giving the inode number, I for inode numbers. And you can see here, we're getting the inode number of the file here. So ls minus li pi and then awk print dollar sign one and 10. So we are just saying that after, after you get the list, first uh, find out that all the files with inode number that has extension of the dot .py, then print um, the first uh, inode number and then the file name, uh, which is dollar sign 10. So this is uh, equivalent to, if I just do this one on the directory of Python, so I have to clear screen here and then say pwd, so programs slash Python. Now, if um, I do this one, ls minus li, star.py would just give you the uh, pi extension. But if I clear the screen and say ls minus li, 
star.py, and then now I say awk, and then I say print a dollar sign one, which is field one in this case, and then comma dollar sign 10, and then I close it, and then I will get the same format that I showed you here. The inode number, the file number. So if you want to get like something like dollar sign two, then it will just show the permissions of this one. Dollar sign three would be like uh, ownership of the, uh, I mean, the uh, linkage. A dollar sign four might be the ownership. Dollar sign file also group permission, so on, so on. Okay, so that is um, those information here, um, filtering it out with pipe. The what is man? We already covered the man and mount, mount minus k earlier. So I'm not gonna go over those ones again because we already covered it. And you can, uh, you're welcome to read the man, uh, PDF file, which is going to be on the description of that uh, video. And then these are some of the examples uh, we did with the printf statement. Uh, make directory is basically creating a, a directory and minus p is going to just create the subdirectories if it doesn't exist. And I'm showing you here examples of them. So if I just go on the website here and then say, oh, where's the make directory command here? Say, for example, make directory here. You can see that the make directory is doing this one. And this uh, directory at the same time, if you want to read the manual pages, it is uh, there for you on the manual pages. And let me just show you a couple of example on make directory. So if I say make their test one, you could see test one just got created here. It is a uh, zero byte. And if I just CD um, to dot dot, and I say uh, R, R, RM dir Python and then test one, since it's empty, it already removed it. So if I go here and say make directory test one, ls minus ld test one, I just uh, create RM dir test one, I just removed it. If I say make dir minus p, minus p test one, and then test two, then test three. Now I see uh, like if I do a three on the test one, uh, then you can see a list of the three directory or ls minus l um, r and then test one. It will show you that test one contains test two and test two contains test three. So if I say rm dir test one, it's gonna say directory is not empty. But if I say rm dir test one slash test uh, unix slash test two also is gonna say this. But if I say test three, test three will be deleted because that one is empty. Yet if I just do um, now test uh, one, test two is gonna be gone. And then if I just do test one is empty, or any directory that's empty, it is going to be deleted. So if I say make dir minus p and just create this uh, three directory again, this time, uh, clear the screen and say ls minus ld uh, this uh, path. You could see that is there. And if I just say, show me uh, in a longer format with recursively, you could see that it is uh, there. If I just say minus rl, and then you can um, do ls minus, let's do um, three of um, test uh, one. You can see that these three files are in there. So this time I'm going to do rm minus rf test one. I say that this is just, if I just do um, rm directory, it's going to say it's not empty. But if I say, well, I don't care, it's empty files and subdirectories, I don't want to go. I could do rm minus rf uh, test one. That would remove uh, test one, test two, and test three recursively. This F means force and R means uh, recursively. So there's no longer this uh, file. If I just do this one, it says no such file or directory. Okay. So that is um, what uh, make dir, new dir, and remove directory and RM uh, is covered. I cover a little bit more than what I'm showing you on some examples. So you could get a variety of examples here. Um, let me just go back here and then. The next one is the more command. More is like uh, uh, the opposite of less. It's gonna show you one screen at a time. Uh, so it's like similar to page. More and page are in the same. Sometimes page is not provided, 
but if you don't have a page uh, command, you can create an alias uh, pointing to more command. So if I say which a PG, if a PG is not installed, then you can uh, just do a more on it, which more is there. So more etc os dash release is going to just do it. The, the file is really huge. Let's say I just um, create a file um, uh, on the directory. I'm going to go to programs and then go to shells and then look at uh, some of my shells. So let's say dot bash any file that I have uh, that are uh, large. Let's say, for example, one file that is uh, question.sh here or um, xterm.sh. xterm.sh, um, I could say cat xterm.sh. It is just uh, a little bit more. So I could say more xterm.sh, xterm.sh. You could see that it's 90% red, then it reads the rest of them. So that's what more is that. Similarly, x uh, term with less command, you see that it reads it and one section at a time, and then you could quit there. So more similarly, um, if you do page xterm.sh, it's going to just do like a more command. And so that's what that is uh, there. So if I go to the Python program, and then I say, uh, what is a file name that is uh, there, like T, it has a lot of these uh, uh, fonts with uh, figlets. I could just say more T, this file, you can see that banner, figlets, all the fonts there, one screen at a time, you can read it. And if you see the star.py, and you say more on the um, uh, players.py, that's a class that I wrote for um, 2023 World, uh, 2022 World Cup my class, so you could read the contents of that one. There's videos on that one if you want to learn Python with object-oriented programming. Uh, you're welcome to watch that one. And then ping command is just basically, I'm showing you here, that is uh, just pinging a um, kind of a IP address or a host name in DNS. So CD here, clear screen, ping, google.com, it's going to just ping it uh, a number of times, four times, and then it's going to stop. And if it doesn't stop, you can control it with ping minus C4 and then google.com, a count of four, and then it's going to do it. Now, if you want to stop it with uh, two times, you can just change the count to two and it will do that. And this is not only to ping Google. So if you want to see that uh, your web server is mywebuniversity.com, it is running. Uh, at some point, uh, you can write this one to a log file. And then you can constantly ping it to see when was uh, a time that uh, maybe this web server was not available. So you can uh, talk to your uh, uh, service provider and say, yeah, this is the time that my service was down. Uh, can you check why it was the case? But usually <laughs> they are not going to be down. So it is uh, a good thing to just uh, rely on the uh, web hosting company that you are getting 99.999. Uh, uh, five nines kind of um, accessibility. And the DIG command is similar to uh, the NS lookup and uh, host command. So you say DIG mywebuniversity.com and it will give you the details on the uh, IP address. And then it does query on the status as well as it shows you the DNS name as well as shows the IP address of uh, the web server, which is a, a record. And then with the um, uh, NS lookup, you can do a, a kind of um, minus query is equal uh, MX record or A record, depending on what you're looking for. So DIG and then dash H uh, give you help for all of the option I'm listing here. Please read this PDF file. It's going to be very helpful for you. And the PDF file, which I have it open here, it is just having a background uh, watermark, wahid.mywebuniversity.com. Other than that, the entire PDF file will be available for you in um, PDF format on the description of this video. And make sure that uh, you can download it, read it, but don't copy it. And just uh, let it uh, be used for everybody so they can enjoy it and I could get the credit for doing all the work for you. Uh, so uh, let me just go back here. And uh, what is NS lookup? NS lookup is uh, similarly, so you can also do a NS lookup 
on a minus Q for query as they call a record for google.com that will be the DNS IP address. And then if you say minus uh, query is equal MX, it will give you MX record, mail exchanger, smtp.google.com. Similarly, if you're looking for the host yahoo.com, and then you can see the MX record is there for a record, you could get it. Um, and if you just don't give any uh, information, by default, it gives you the A record uh, there um, on the information. So this is not to only and this, you can do any website. So um, NS lookup and www.myweburiversity.com, you can get it. And then similarly, minus Q, um, minus Q is equal A record. And then similarly, what uh, minus Q is MX record, mail exchange record, uh, you could get uh, those information. And if the website or server uh, doesn't have it, minus Q because you're not uh, running a web server there. Um, I mean, a, a mail server. It's not listening to SMTP or port 25. So uh, grip minus um, I SMTP ETC services. That's how you know that uh, uh, mail is running on port 25 for SMTP protocol. And similarly, if I look for uh, SSHD, that's 22. So any process that are running, uh, there's a port uh, associated with it. And then you could do sudo uh, su dash, um, uh, let's say sudo lsof minus i column 22, you would see that um, I could uh, see that port 22 on this one is uh, running on the, for uh, SSH and my connection is somewhere there with who am I. I'm learning 136 and 136 is somewhere um, on this um, uh, ones that I'm having it uh, algorithm. And then and the one that we showed you earlier, PS that is uh, PTS2, PTS0, and then that's uh, connecting there. We can trace it further if we do LSOF on the process ID um, minus P uh, on the process ID of that uh, process that I'm running. And this lookup, we did that one at RM and at uh, Q is basically when you're running cron jobs, you have uh, cron jobs, you can configure it. You can also run at jobs, at RM, remove a jobs, at is just to schedule it similar to batch uh, or cron jobs, but at is like a, at a certain time, you run a command. So like, for example, at now plus one minute, I want to run PWDLS. And when you type in in the file or control D, the command job starts and then uh, later on, you can look at at Q to uh, uh, just uh, look at the query on the Q uh, job name. And then once you get the job name, when it is done at the time, it will just say it is removed. Um, but you can also do a, a, at remove and then the job ID number that is there that is uh, listening, it will do it. At Q will just show that if there's anything on the Q or not. The sort command is similarly sorts uh, files. Here I'm giving you an example saying that sort me dot text, this is the content of it. And then later on, I'm going to just cut the file and awk print dollar sign two and dollar sign one sort uh, with the numbers minus n. So you can see the line numbers are showing at the uh, sorting orders. And then if you uh, do the same thing with the descending order uh, with the text, you can do uh, with the text uh, and sorting order as well. So in this case, it is uh, sorted by dollar sign two first and dollar sign one and second. Dollar sign two was the uh, name of the host, as you can see, I mean, the string and here the, on the file dollar sign one is that this. So it's sorted by uh, Oracle showing, uh, uh, my web university showing us first because M is before O and O is before S and S is before U and U is before W. And then uh, the touch command I already showed you, you can create the touch files and uh, see this ID we already showed you, the who am I already showed you, PWD uh, we already covered, uh, touch command we covered, and let me just see, make sure that date command we covered, touch new file, LS minus LD. So this last commands that I'm covering here is the, uh, w and the who uh, command, these two, W and who. So, um, and then um, I think that's it uh, on the end of it. So let me just 
cover the W and who command. So W by itself, it says who is logged on. So you can also see who uh, there, who is logged on on the system. Who minus R give you run level. So in this case, I'm running in a GUI uh, interface in Ubuntu and Red Hat. Uh, run level five is identified as uh, five and seven. And then um, sometimes three is multi-user and two is um, multi-user, but three is multi-user with NFS and then one is single user mode. And those run levels are defined here. So on uh, Solaris, uh, run level five is also to halt the system with shutdown. And then uh, and net zero would be like uh, to shut down the machine. Uh, run level uh, six is reboot. And then uh, similarly on uh, Solaris as uh, dash S1, single user mode, or S uppercase or lowercase S would go single user mode. Here, run level one is one. Uh, and two is multi-user and uh, Linux and Ubuntu. Three is uh, multi-user with NFS. Four is not used. Five is uh, run level uh, graphic. And then six is reboot. Seven is also graphic and then uh, so on. So let's just uh, say who um, run, run level command itself. If you do that, one also says the run level five the last time uh, there. So which run level you can see it's a Unix command slash so sbin run level gives you the n5 and then who minus or give you also n5 run level five and then um, who command is giving you who's logged on who am i we just talked about that one if you say who am i all in one word it says wlp similar to id uh, and then id dash u for user and then n is going to be wlp so id uh, and by itself, it gives you everything. But if I see, you say ID dash UN, will give you WLTP and uh, name and name uh, concept. So who am I also gave you that one. But who a space MI is going to give you the um, machine that you're coming from. So if you just say this one, it says that you're coming from that one. Echo dollar sign display is setting uh, your display. Uh, there and then if I just start something and graphic now since I'm uh, enabled uh, enabled uh, display which is on the next topic we will cover extern session next uh, um, clock ex, uh, all the ex, uh, related commands as I just uh, things I'm uh, going to show you for example one command uh, with the banner uh, since we have uh, we have a figlet which uh, figlet you can see that this is a utility that I installed. And so at, um, at uh, show figlet, you will see the details of the figlet here. So which a figlet is installed, uh, show uh, fig uh, fonts. This will just run, show you all the fonts that I showed you on the other uh, files. You can say uh, figlet banner and then say, um, thanks for your time. So you could see that it says thanks for your time. Uh, and uh, so you could say thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe and whatever you do, uh, make sure you help yourself. God bless you all. Take care, have a nice one. And um, I'll post this PDF file in the description of the file and then um, it will be available for you. Uh, take care uh, and um, have fun. Bye now.